Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. Tonight, we're moving on to episode two of our CME CNC Rostock Max version 3.2 build series. This will be the second episode in the series. If you're not familiar with the CME CNC line of Delta printers, check out the link below in the des description and so you can get familiar with their products. If you missed the previous episode in the series, it's okay to pause it here and go back and watch that so you're caught up and you know where we're at in the build process. So if you guys are ready to do it, let's do it. Okay, so in part one of the series, we unboxed the printer and took a quick inventory of all the parts as they came out of the box. And I left you there where I was going to go offline and do an inventory of the detailed parts based on the BOM sheets that were in each package, as well as sorting everything out and counting screws and nuts and bolts and checking all the parts to make sure nothing was missing. The other part was to peel away the paper surfaces off the melamine laser cut pieces. That encompasses steps one and two of the manual, which brings us to start off with step three. And we're going to start there and we're going to get through uh, several steps tonight. I'm going to try to keep the segments of the series short down to five or ten minutes apiece. And uh, of course I'll be doing more work in that segment by using time lapses and such, but I want to minimize it. I do want to make sure that I take the time to focus on areas that may not be clear in the manual or a little bit of explanation may be necessary to give you a hand with your build. So let's kick over to the other camera view and let's get started on step three. So for the step three, we're going to begin by installing the feet. Now I'm actually going to kind of merge steps three and four together here as we go through this because they're, they tie in together. To do this we're going to need the bottom plate and it's depicted uh, by these lines and ventilation lines in the center as well as an X, uh, a Y, and a Z markings on it. Then the other piece that we're going to need is the feet that came out of the, there you go, the feet that came out of the base package. So, in that package, we should have six of sets of everything of the black rubber pieces here, I'm sorry, the black plastic pieces, um, the nuts and the bolts uh, that are nylon, as well as the snap-on feet. Now, the side of this that has the engraving on it of the X, Y, and Z is going to be our upside. So we're going to be working on the bottom of that. And we're going to begin by flipping it over and we're going to start with the X. It's going to be these two screws here that span, see it there, it's going to be these two holes that span each of these two rectangular blocks. So we're going to start off by taking our black piece, going to drive a bolt through it, and we're going to drop that on the X here. Going to drop two of those in like so. Then I'm going to take two of the nuts here on top and these are nylon so you don't want to go too tight with them. So we'll start off by going finger tight. Then we're going to flip it over this way since I'm right handed. We're going to use a slotted screwdriver and a pair of pliers. In this case, I'm using needle nose because I don't want a lot of traction on the nut. I just want to get it snug. 
and we're going to tighten that up. It looks like I can actually hold that better with my fingers than I can the needle on those pliers. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process for the other two corners here and we'll go from there. Okay, once we have that done, that concludes step three, and we're going to finish it off with step four, where we're going to snap these little rubber BB buggy bumpers onto the bottom. It looks like this one particular nut did not tighten up very well and is spinning freely here, so I'm going to try to, it's my better judgment, try to grab that a little bit tighter and see if I can torque it down enough so that it doesn't spin anymore. Okay, now that all of your feet are snapped on, you can flip it back over on your flat surface, give it a gentle push just to make sure that they're all seated, and we're done with step four. So let's move on to step five. Okay, so for step five is going to be preparing the power supply. So for this, just to make sure that we have everything you're going to need, you're going to need these two melamine cut pieces here. You're going to need your power supply and it needs to be out of the box and the plastic shielding cut off of it. Check. Then you're going to need um, the, the four M4 screws that were in the base hardware package and a Phillips screwdriver, number two Phillips screwdriver to put those on. And then we're going to need out of the 632 screws, we're going to need, I believe, two of those and two nuts, matching nylock nuts. And go ahead and set these back aside and we're going to start putting this together. So what we're going to do is we're going to orientate the power supply as shown so that the fan is here on the right. You want to make sure that the switch here, the red switch that goes between 110 and 220, you want to make sure that is set for the appropriate voltage at this point for your country. In the US, we want it slid to the left for 110. If you're in Asia or Europe or other places, you're going to want to set over to 220. Okay, now that we have our melamine laser cut pieces and we get a lot of reflection off that because it's so shiny, but that will go away soon enough. We are going to, for the manual, those are going to be orientated like so. And we're just going to get it started by hand. We're going to uh, feed in two screws on either side where it lines up. And then we're going to tighten that down. I'm going to flip it over here. And then we're going to line up the other piece in the similar fashion with the angles pointed the same direction. So in this case, the tail points this way. And we're going to hand start our two M4 screws like so. And snug them down. Now with this melamine, you don't want to over tighten it or you will crack and shatter the melamine. Not as easily as acrylic pieces, but you still don't want to, to do it. Just want to get it snug. Okay, now the last step, part of step five, is we're going to take the two nylock nuts, like so, and we're going to drop one in either side in this T 
cut here that looks like that. So going to just basically drop it in like so. Get to hold it with your finger and then we're going to drop one in the other side the same way. And now we can set this down and now we're going to move back over here to our our base. Now there's hooks on here and that are going to line up into these two slots here. Basically going to set it down so that those go through. If you over tighten these screws you're going to need to loosen them up just a little bit until it's seated just to give it a little bit of play. Okay, that's going to slide back and once you do that where these nuts are that we put in there's a matching hole here and we're going to take our last two screws and hand thread those through just to get them started so the nuts don't fall out. We're going to flip it over and we're going to tighten those up the rest of the way. Again, you don't want to over tighten these because you don't want to crush the melamine surface, the laser cut melamine surface. Once you have those tightened down, go ahead and go back and tighten these screws on top back up if you had to loosen them to get it to fit in. And we are done now with step six. Uh, if you have any Haribo, give yourself a reward. If you have a beer to grab a drink. If not, actually we are done with step seven. I take that back. We moved right through. So we are going to set this over here for now and we're going to move on to step eight. And this will be the last step that we're going to do on this video um, or this last section, step eight and step nine, which are the base tower supports. Now there in the manual here there is a little short video which shows you it's a rendering that shows you how to assemble those pieces so let's pull those out let me pull those out while I show you that rendering quick Okay, so we've got all the pieces out here for step eight and nine. We're going to need three of these 88407 plates that look like this out of the injection molded pieces. We're going to need three of the 84408 pieces that look like this. We're going to need our three bearings that came in the base kit and note if there's any uh, stray plastic on these from the injection molding process, go ahead and uh, wipe that off now. Uh, we're going to need a handful of the T-nuts and quarter inch bolts that came in the base hardware pack. Going to need the number four half inch screws and we are going to need a bunch of these guys, about six uh, or seven of those, of the nylock washers. So let me show you how to put these guys together. The render should have helped, but we're going to start with the base here. We're going to put the wheel on the outside piece, like so, and snug it down. We're then going to take this guy and snap it in as well, so that it looks like so. Now no, you don't have anything on this center piece here, that's okay. Um, doesn't need to be anything on there. These are kind of a universal piece that will get used on the top towers later. So once we do that, or before you do that, you don't necessarily have to do this in the same order. We're going to put a total of four T-nuts on either side here. I'm going to drop one here and we're just going to get started on the thread 
so that it's hanging. I'm going to drop one here right above it. And then we're going to drop two on these opposing two corners on the opposite side. Okay, and you don't want to tighten those up very far, just enough so that they're not going to fall off. Now we can line this piece back up. Now there's two screw holes on the smaller of the two plastic pieces, one that goes through the washer here and one over here uh, through that other stanchion. So we're going to take two screws, one in each hole, and we're going to go ahead and tighten those down. Again, you don't want to over tighten it, just get them so that they're snug. Okay, and that's done. We're going to repeat this two more times for our other parts. Okay, you can see that I'm kind of doing these a little bit out of order from the manual, but that's just because I'm doing it assembly line style. And one thing I do want to point out is when you tighten these side screws here, you don't want to tighten them so bad that the, that the uh, pulley won't turn. You do want to make sure that that rotates. And it doesn't have to sit there and spin, uh, per se, but it needs to be able to move freely with your finger press. Okay, and then the last piece that I left off there was the nylon hex nuts. Now these are going to go in to these T sections on all sides and you're going to want to push them in and if you need to use needle nose pliers to do it but there's going to be two on either side. Remember that the ball section goes towards the top of the screw hole. Also the nuts go in much easier I just found out if I would have read the directions myself. Um, if you put them in from the inside. Okay, so tonight in part two, we got through the end of step nine where we have the power supply attached to the base, the feet are on the base, and we've built the three base tower supports. Part three, we're going to continue on with step 10, which is starting the motor mount assembly overview and going from there. So that's all we have for today. Thanks for joining us on Practical Printing. Thanks for watching our CME CNC Rostock V3.2. 3.2 build series. And we'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Remember, if you like what we're doing, please hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you're notified of when the next part of the series is out. If you're doing any shopping online at Amazon or Matter Hackers, would greatly appreciate it if you consider using the affiliate links down below. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it helps me put out videos like this. Special thanks to CME CNC for allowing me to bring you this build series, and aloha.